This is a review of the Orchard Audio Bosque, that's B-O-S-C, but I'll call them Bosque monoblock amplifiers. And this isn't the original introduction to this video because, well, I did do an introduction and then I did most of this review and then I had some, well, I can only describe it as breaking news, I suppose, from the manufacturer Orchard Audio. So I've added that onto the end of this video. I won't go into it now because unless you watch the video, the breaking news bit won't really make too much sense. That might sway your decision one way or the other, but I thought I'd mention it now just in case. Anyway, onto the review. Now quickly before I actually go into the specifics on this model, monoblock amplifiers per se are, in my opinion, a good thing. No, strike that, a great thing. In terms of hi-fi in general, I love to separate items, separate tasks within the hi-fi chain. The more different boxes there are, the more space in between those boxes, the better, because you reduce noise, high frequency noise, vibration, and other incoming nasties that will affect sound quality. The notion of monoblock amplifiers basically takes a power amplifier and separates that power amplifier into two bits, one looking after each channel. So you have a box looking after the left channel, and another box looking after the right channel. The monoblocks plug into a pre-amplifier and at the other end of the chain, the speakers plug into those self-same monoblocks. The Bosque monoblocks, I think Bosque, B-O-S-C, I think it stands for better oscillation, but we'll call it Bosque for now, uses gallium nitride technology within. It's also based on the class D amplification. Orchard Audio I actually say that this combination of the Bosque technology gallium nitride technology and class D is actually better performing than a class A or a class AB linear type of amplifier design, which is a bold claim, as some of you will be aware. And I will be testing that particular claim, of course, a bit later on, but we'll get there. Another reason to use all of these technologies is to keep the weight down and also to keep the heat down. An awful lot of other amplifier types push out an awful lot of heat. In terms of the chassis, it uses an aluminium chassis, and what you'll find is that it's powder coated to give it a tough exterior. The Bosque amplifiers actually arrive as four separate items. You have your two monoblocks, and to power these monoblocks, they each have their own power supplies. So you have four items to contend with. Now, this is great, again, because separating the power supply from the monoblocks lowers noise. The only issue I have with the design of the actual monoblock chassis themselves is where the sockets go. On one side, you'll have the speaker sockets. On the opposite side, you'll have an input socket and a socket for the power supply. Now to the manufacturer, this is a plus point because what the manufacturer wants you to do, Orchard, is to place these monoblocks nearer to the speakers. So what it wants you to do is to have very short speaker cable lengths and place the monoblocks close to the speakers. And so out of the other side, you will have a long power cable going to your mains, which is fine in theory, but I don't like the idea of having a throbbing power monoblock so close to your speaker. I think any benefits you'll get from having a short speaker cable length will be lost by having the actual power supply close to the cable. I think having both of these items so close together will cause issues all on their own. So I would much prefer to have my monoblocks in the standard hi-fi rack, well away from speakers, to reduce that potential noise migration as well as the vibration. So when I placed my monoblocks on my shelf, the standard shelf, I as normal in these situations had the speaker cables pointing to the rear, which meant that my speaker cables would connect at the rear. Hence, my Bosque amplifiers sat cosily on my isolation shelf. Problem with that option is that while the speaker terminals face the rear in a traditional manner, the inputs and connections to the separate power supplies didn't. They faced the front. This meant that my input cables were attached and then looped over the Bosque chassis to exit to the rear to find their way to my preamp. Now, I could have moved the power supplies to the rear too, but that would have added to the cable clutter and multitude of boxes around the rear of my hi-fi. 
Maybe in your setup the above won't be a problem, in which case just ignore what I've just said. As it stands for me though, the whole thing looked a little messy and awkward. Now the image that you're looking at is a representation of the issue I had, and as you can see, it's a whole clutter of cables. So frankly, I hated the array of sockets on the chassis of the Bosque amplifiers. Now the power supplies for the Bosque amplifiers were selected for a number of reasons. Firstly, so that they could be used in any location in the world, in any type of electrical supply, no matter what the voltage. Secondly, they were chosen so that you can change the IEC cable that goes to the mains. You can bin the kettle type lead that you're given as a freebie and you can replace that with an upgrade of your own, which I recommend. It also comes with protective circuits. Now to repeat, I love the idea of separating the power supply from a power monoblox. I love the idea of separating that power supply somewhere else to lower the actual overall noise that you'll be hearing. The sound quality will increase. The issue I've got, as I say, is how they are implemented, how those power supplies are implemented, where they're placed and how they're designed and the whole thing. I just don't think the design has been thought through properly in this particular case. To connect the power supplies, the units use a Molex Mini Fit Junior style, which is used in the electronics industry and can handle large currents. According to Orchard, the connector is keyed, preventing it from being plugged in the wrong way. Also, wires from the power supply are run in parallel, lowering the impedance of the connection between the amplifier and the power supply. Now, impedance is an issue all on its own, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, the built-in inputs of these Bosk amplifiers are balanced, so there are no single-ended RCA inputs available. To run these amplifiers as single-ended boxes, you can do it, but you have to actually plug in a couple of converters which are supplied via Orchard Audio. So basically, you plug in the RCA connectors into the balanced connections. Now I had issues with this as well, to be absolutely honest with you, because, well, let's say you have a headphone amplifier and it has a full size 6.35 millimeter socket and you have a pair of headphones with a mini jack on it, three and a half mil. You put a connector in, don't you? So you can use your headphones. I know for a fact, because I've tested these things, that using the connector, plugging the, the converter, as it were, into the headphone amp, actually reduce the sound quality. I don't like converters. And I had potential issues with this. Now I asked Orchard Audio about the possibilities of the converter itself lowering sound quality. And it said to me, the adapters will not reduce sound quality at all. Building an RCA connector into the design requires additional circuitry, which would add noise to the amplifier, as well as increased cost. With the adapter, both issues are resolved. I'm not sure about resolved, and I'm also not sure which would be the best of the choices available, the adapter or the extra circuitry. I mean, if you had extra circuitry in the actual chassis, you could build isolation around this, you could design it in such a way, etc., etc. With a clunky converter plug, and this particular plug doesn't look anything special, I'm not sure. But there's no way for me to test this. It's, there's no way for me to do an AB to actually prove my point or not. So look, I've given you some of my reservations here, but there's an awful lot of good stuff going on with these Bosque amplifiers. I love the separation of the boxes into separate bits. I love the implementation of the gallium nitride technology and the way Class D has been utilized in these designs. It's all very interesting. I wanted to ask the company what its recommendation was in terms of setup. And it said, the best use of the amp is to place it close to the speakers and have a speaker cable that is very short. This will also mean that in most cases, the connection to the amplifier's input will be longer, hence the default to a balanced connection, as it is better at reducing noise over longer distances. The balanced connection also makes for an amplifier that is truly balanced from input to output. So as I say, I disagree with a lot of that. So I initially, when I did my sound tests, I added the RCA single-ended adapter on the balanced inputs at the back of the amplifier. I placed my, my monoblocks on my shelf and I had a standard length of speaker cable. So I just treated them as normal 
power amplifiers. There's a little bit of care and attention you need to apply to these amplifiers. And the reason is there's no on off switch. I repeat, with these particular amplifiers, there is no power switch. Orchard Audio does emphasize that. Do not power the amplifiers without speakers connected and do not plug in a live power supply into the amplifier. To turn the amplifier on, connect your speakers, connect the input, either balanced or single-ended, then plug in the power supply into the amplifier. The power supply needs to be off and the green light on the power supply is also off. Then plug in your power supply into an AC outlet. When turning off, you must unplug from the AC outlet and wait at least three minutes for the capacitors to discharge. Then remove other connections. And you must do this to avoid damage to the amplifier. Now I put all of this into this particular video just to emphasize the point that you have to be careful when turning this thing on and turning it off again. Some people will see the notion of turning this thing on and turning it off again as a right old pain in the neck. And I can sort of see that angle. And that's one reason why I thought I would add all of that information to this video. You really need to know what you're getting yourself into with these particular amplifiers. They're quirky, they're slightly eccentric, they're a bit odd, um, they're different. But the fact that they're odd and eccentric and quirky and different sort of appeals to me because I love designers who go their own way. You know, they like to walk down their own path. They don't follow the crowd because that can result in mm, interesting results. Now I know I'm delaying the results of the sound tests here, but I've given you good reasons. And there's one more good reason why I'm delaying the results of the sound tests, and that's the gain and the impedance. When I plugged my hi-fi into the Orchard Audio Bosque amplifiers, I had an issue with gain, and it was because of impedance. Now what this meant in practical terms was the volume was low. I have basically a valve chain. I have valve phono amp, two boxes. I have a valve preamp, and I also have valve monoblocks in my hi-fi chain. This is my high-end reference system. I have different reference systems. I have a budget reference system and a mid-range reference system. This is a high-end one I'm talking about now. So all valves going through. Connecting the Bosque amplifiers to my valve chain, well, it didn't really like it. Valves have issues in terms of impedance according to the Bosque amplifier. So when I plugged in the Bosque amplifier into my chain, it was difficult to get much noise from it. The volume was pretty low. For example, when I played music, to get to my normal listening volume, I had to increase the volume of my preamplifier by about 15 clicks, one five, 15 clicks. And that was a hell of a boost of gain to try and get to that same volume. Now that's in single ended mode. Connecting the amplifier in balanced mode did increase the gain a tad. So I then, to get that same volume level I mentioned earlier, instead of 15 clicks in balance mode, it was about seven or eight clicks. But I still had to whack on the gain to get an appreciable volume. Again, impedance is an issue here. Frankly, if you're gonna use the Bosque Orchard amplifiers, if you've got valves, I just wouldn't go there. Just don't do it. I did test the Bosque amplifiers with a solid state preamp. I had one from Lima and it was fine. No problems at all in terms of volume, in terms of gain, everything was fine, no problems. So avoid valves with this Bosque amplifier. Make sure you go solid state only. Right, down to the sound test. And to begin with, I played some Peggy Lee from an album called Raindrops. And speaking of Raindrops, I played a track called Raindrops are falling on my head. And I immediately noticed a major drop in high frequency noise playing the Bosque amplifiers and a swathe of new air and space within the mid-range which pushed open the soundstage, expanding it left and right. All of the reconstruction work of the soundstage created a new level of clarity and transparency. Hence, the string section was smooth and flowed oh so easily, while the brass section was most definitely metallic in form without ever being bright or edgy. Peggy Lee's own delivery was just lovely, full of subtleties. And I did notice, especially with older LPs like this, before the notion of the word reverb, there was old fashioned echo, 
which was attached to your lead vocal. With the Peggy Lee lead vocal, some amplifiers, some power amplifiers, could portray the lead vocal with vocal and then echo stuck on with a piece of blue tack almost to the vocal. It could sound a little bit false, slightly mechanical almost. With the Bosque amplifiers, it didn't have that at all. The Lee delivery was totally naturalistic. Everything was part of the one. The vocal and the echo flowed as one natural organic sound. Similarly, Rock was impressive, playing Thin Lizzy's Chinatown and the track Having a Good Time. The entire production was large, grand and complex, being epic in size and presentation. Bass wasn't humongous, but neither was it insipid. Bass didn't swamp the mix, instead it was full of impact and form, but never encroached into those sonic areas where it may have caused damage. It never swamped or masked the mids or fragile treble, but remained focused. Now don't forget, all of these sounds were coming from a single-ended connection that I was using, using these slightly suspicious RCA single-ended converters I mentioned earlier on. So what I did, I took out those converters, giving a great sound as they were, but I took them out anyway, and then went to a balanced connection. In balanced mode, bass upped the ante. There was much more of it in the soundstage, which aided rock output, but also helped to balance jazz output too. That said, bass didn't step out of line. It retained its discipline and continued to occupy the same areas. The change in bass was in its form. Wherever it sat, it offered a greater presence, a larger mass and heft. So the bottom line, using the balanced cables, I found that the Bosque amplifiers increased and enhanced their tonal balance, enhancing the bass, but again, keeping the bass in line. Frankly, if you're gonna use these amplifiers, I would go for balanced only. If you're gonna go for single-ended, fine, but make sure that's part of a later upgrade. If you're gonna use these amplifiers, Balanced is the way to go. If you're only going to go for single-ended, you're only going to hear 50% of what these amplifiers are capable of producing. Now, my conclusion here is different. During editing this video, you would have seen a different conclusion, and I would have ended it with great sound, shame about the design. But there is a little bit of breaking news here, because during the editing, I'd almost finished, and I received word from Orchard Audio an upgrade, a change in the actual design of the chassis. Orchard Audio sent me an email which said this, per user and reviewer feedback, the Bosque amps are now available with all the connectors on the back as well as the inline option. And as you can see, I've placed a couple of images showing the updated design. Now that's one major issue I had with the design solved as far as I'm concerned. Now, of course, all my issues are not completely cleared up, I still have some issues with the single-ended converter. And then there's those impedance questions, especially if you have valve equipment. However, the design itself, everything being on the rear, might actually be a deal breaker for some of you. So I thought I would include that in this video. Quirky design, eccentric design, strange design. But in the end, bottom line, it can produce some superlative sound quality. So you need to weigh up the pros and cons here. You need to decide if any of the issues I've brought up are issues which maybe are just too much for you, or if they're not a problem, I would certainly investigate the Bosque amplifiers from Orchard Audio. Now, the one thing I did forget to mention is the price, silly me. One and a half thousand dollars is what you'd be paying for these monoblock amplifiers. And we are talking dollars here. You have to buy these amplifiers direct from the manufacturer but the manufacturer tells me he will supply to anywhere in the world. You can plug this in no matter what your electrical supply, so there's no issues there. And if you want all those sockets at the rear, as I've mentioned in the breaking news, then there is an option to select that in the shop area of the website. So don't forget to check that out as well. I'll put a link below for you to have a look. In the meantime, thank you for staying till the end, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye for now.